My dear friends, the world inside out starts a new and dangerous expedition in a search of the wild tribes, this time in Ecuador. One of the most cruel Indian tribes in the world lives just here. The Waurani, this tribe still kills the strangers who come to their land. A man was killed here on the bank. We didn't care who they were, we just killed them, that's all. We'll find out how many people were attacked by the Indians. I killed about 20 people. This spare was in my son's body. We'll find the people who survived. They pursued my husband with a spear and held him. I managed to jump into the boat, start the engine and escape. We'll travel a dangerous path to the most remote corners of Ecuadorian Amazonia. We spent two days in this boat already. That's how we spent the night in the jungle. There are people out there who can attack us. We're doing it to learn more about the shocking traditions and the unique rituals of the Vaurani tribe. Agua! Agua! <laughs> we'll learn more about the life of the people who lived in the remote forest 50 years ago. It's fallen. Look, it has fallen. Why are we kissing the tree? Won't your wife get angry if I touch you? She'll forgive. We'll see the wild tribes mastering the modern technologies. Look, it's a rotor, a way to communicate with each other. Do you usually live like this or like this? And find out why the Indians regret making contact with a civilization. Did you miss the real adventures? The expedition is about to start. Let's fly! We'll need to go to Amazonia to find Vaurani. This huge area occupies one-third of the continent of South America and is situated on the territory of nine countries. We've already started Amazonia during our Brazilian season. Now we've come to its Ecuadorian part. So there are only tributaries of the Amazon River here, not the river itself. This area hides many unfathomable secrets. There are endless and penetrable forests which are home to the thousands of species of wild animals and birds. But the real masters of this land are Indians who are hiding from the outer world in the jungle in small groups, not letting the strangers near. Our expedition to Ecuadorian Amazonia starts from the city of Coco. Since the expedition is going to be very complicated, we will need a super professional guide. And not just a guide, he has to be from the tribe we are planning to visit, the Baurani tribe. We'll need guides who know their way around the Amazonian jungle, where their tribe lives. These guides must understand which areas are the most dangerous and how not to become a victim of the non-contact tribes. They're already waiting. Buenos dias! Vopani. Vopani. Vopani, does it mean hello in Vaurani language? Yes. I'm Miguel. I'm Dima, and you? Ginto Tega. Ginto and Miguel are the father and the son from the Vaurani tribe. They will be our guides during the expedition. You don't look like Indians anymore. You have modern clothes. He says, Juventus. The son translates to his father from Spanish into the language of the tribe, as the father doesn't speak Spanish. Yes, I like football. But we have another aim today. We are going to meet one of the most, and even looking at these people, I will repeat it, one of the most dangerous tribes on our planet. Please confirm my words. Yes, that's true. We might look like the city people now, but our ancestors were strong and brave warriors who attacked the cities often. Even Coca was attacked by the Vailrani twice. Why did they attack? So the cities wouldn't grow and invade our jungle. Looks like nowadays our people live both in the forest and in the city. Yes, I study in Coca to be a lawyer. I want to defend my people on the legislative level. We have different concepts of the law. In our culture, there's the freedom of self-expression, entertainment, and the freedom of murder. For example, if someone offends me, I can take a revenge and kill him. It's normal for us. But not for the modern world. So young people study the laws to try to unite these two worlds somehow. So the blood revenge still exists. Yes, it still happens in our culture. Our ancestors killed people. It happens more rarely nowadays, but the blood revenge still takes place. You promised to show me the real Valrani and tell what they are like, why they are so dangerous and what makes them different from all the other tribes of the world. Yes, we'll go to our village tomorrow. It'll take us not to less than two days to get there. It depends on the water level. But I have to warn you, Bameno, the place 
place where we're going is surrounded by the non-contact tribes' territories. We'll go through their wilderness areas where they can attack us. Non-contact tribes are the low-numbered people who still live in isolation of the modern world nowadays, just like their ancestors. They deny any attempts to contact the civilization and kill anyone who steps on their grounds. It happens not only in Ecuador. Last year, a non-contact tribe in Brazil has killed a human rights advocate of the indigenous people. And in 2018, in India, the Sentinelese tribe has killed an American with a bow. In 2015, the isolated Manchapira tribe has attacked a village in Peru. But the most reports about the non-contact tribe's attacks come from Ecuador. Two groups of Indians keep everyone in fear, the Tagueri and the Taramanane. In the 21st century, when the tourists can fly into space, you can sail down the river, stop and get killed just because you are on their land. Yes, it's normal. It's normal, my friends. It's something ordinary, so we have very interesting adventures ahead of us. The way from the city to the settlement is very long. So the Indians use every chance to buy all the necessary stuff for their tribe. Cereal, sugar, salt, eggs, canned goods, pasta. Everything that's impossible to get in the jungle. Yes, the modern Vaurani eat such food too. But of course, we can't come to the village empty-handed. So today we are shopping for the gifts for the whole tribe. Let's go together and buy the most needed and the most interesting things. Machete. First of all, machete. How many do you need? About 15. Is this your main working tool? Yes. We need this to gather yucca, cut the trees, make the hunting blowpipes. Before we used machetes during the battles. You aren't going to kill anyone with this now, right? <laughs> if you're not, then I will buy them. What else do you need? Some bowls. The Indians ordered the bowls, the sharpeners for machetes, some knives and fishing tackle. So the hunting and the fishing. Nothing has changed in the thousands of years. We bought everything for the male business. Now it's time to think about women. How many women are there in your village? 37. We want to buy some pots for our own older women. And what about the younger ones? I don't even know. Imagine you can take anything for free. What would you take? It's impressive how modest the people are. In any other tribe, if they were allowed to take anything they wanted, they'd take the half of the goods here. And these people are thinking it over. It's just that has never been in a situation when he could get anything he wanted. What else do you need? The lanterns, the toilet paper, the toys. I don't know, maybe some dishes? We can take the toys for the kids and the bottles for the girls to carry water. Go ahead and choose. So you choose the bottles. Do you drink water from the river? Yes, we do. Look at this bottle. Why don't you want to take it? It costs four dollars. Too expensive. I'm so impressed. I see you are noble people. You are not greedy. And you care about the other people's money too. We are not used to having money. So we treat it thriftily. We never take anything extra. We only buy the most necessary things. We'll take some volleyballs and soccer balls for the kids and a lot of soft toys so everybody could get one. It's interesting that they use American dollars here. There is no national currency in Ecuador. You get dollars in the ATMs and in the banks. The tribes use dollars too. So, we're only people. Are you happy now? Yes. Will you let me be your guest? Yes. You won't kill me, right? Yeah. We won't. I know you have 15 machetes now, by the way. This can be our protection on the way through the non-contact tribes lands to fight if they attack. I doubt it will help. They use spears. Do you travel armed? No. Well, someone might think not taking their weapons going on such a dangerous trip is a real suicide. But if you take the gun, you must be ready to shoot and kill. I know all the risks, but I cannot even think about doing such thing myself. Yes, the non-contact Indians are cruel, but we are invading their land, not the vice versa. We are going there to study and not to disturb anyone. So to protect ourselves, we must be careful, observant, trust our good feelings, and most importantly, our guides' experience and knowledge.